Hello everybody, it's me Tonic TZW and in the patch notes we see that the tier 7 premium Japanese destroyer the Adachi is going to make a return for global XP and I believe it's going to be 750,000 global XP the same as many of the other tier 7 premium ships that are available in the store but the question is is it still relevant in the game today now let me start by saying that when the yudachi was first released we didn't have tier 8 and we didn't have legendary tier as far as i can remember it was a long time ago and a lot's happened since then but the Adachi was to tier 7 what the Shimakaze is to legendary tier at the moment. It is a torpedo ninja. Not quite as many torpedoes as the Shimakaze, but certainly sufficient and certainly hard hitting enough to ruin any tier 7 ship's day. So, what we're going to do is take a look at. Um, what i've got my yadachi set up as and the different captains that you might have available for him the build that i've been running on mine and then i've got a juicy little replay for you so let's get into it so the closest comparable tech tree ship in the game is probably the tier 7 kagero both ships are very similar and um, you'll see here on the top we've got the yudachi specs and down on the bottom the kagero and this is based on my current build so if you want to pause and have a look at these stats in a little bit more detail um, then please do but there really isn't a lot of difference in the ships the kigero has a slightly faster torpedo reload it has one more gun um, but it does have a larger turning circle and uh, a few more hit points over the yudachi with the setup that i have at the moment all in very comparable ships one of the big differences with the Adachi is with it being a tier 7 premium that you are going to get a huge boost to the number of credits that you get per game because I think it is a 50 or 55 percent bonus at tier 7 for premiums captains and inspirations um the one that most people will be running is Rizor tanaka this is a pretty standard build that i have set up here a lot of people do give up perceptive there and go for torpedo range um it's completely up to you if you're running a full stealth build you can out detect pretty much anything on the map but i do like to know where things are if you splash some cash, you could have Gunzo Chahaya, who is one of the Azure Lane captains. Um, he has a couple of extra little perks in there as well with the um, torpedo bundle, which will give you some reduction in the torpedo reload time. But then you won't know where people are. And the one that everybody wants is Space Fishy. He does give you some extra torpedo speed. I haven't got him fully leveled at the moment. Um, but at max level, I think it's an extra four knots. And he will also give you a couple of en extra engine boosts. And this is useful to get around the map. As far as my modules and build go, it is very simple and straightforward. We're running Aiming Systems Mod 1 just to give us some accuracy on the guns when we are able to file them because it's a seven and a half second reload how we've got this set up now we've got some reduction in rudder shift again it's personal choice on there but i'd say the engine the middle one or the rudder then we're running the um, concealment system mod one because we do want to have a stealthy boat and i'm not running a legendary mod on this I haven't really used them but torpedo launches mod three to drop that torpedo reload reduction time and then there is the option to run some shorter range higher damage and much faster torpedoes but you are then putting yourself in the way of danger so this is my current space fishy setup you'll see that um, we have got space speed with an extra 3.8 knots um, subsurface venture giving us an extra four percent or sorry an extra four knots torpedo speed and a reduction in torpedo re uh, launcher reload time 
Then we run a fragile threat. We're sacrificing 10% of our hit points for another 8% reduction in detectability. Perceptive, which reduces incoming damage, lets us pick up torpedoes earlier and also tells us where the nearest ship is. And this is his uh, special skill, which is breakneck speed, gives us extra engine boost charges, um, but it does cut the engine boost duration and then we're running unstoppable because we don't want to get our engines shut out and be a sitting duck all in all not a bad little ship inspirations wise we're running eric bay and jersey swirsky literally to bring that concealment down we sat on 4.8 kilometers concealment even with the nerfs that wargaming have thrown at us You'll notice from the team list here that there are no radar cruisers. There are some cruisers. There's one radar destroyer. Sit back. Hold on to your seats because this was like a hot knife through butter. It really was not a challenge at all. Had there been radar cruisers out there, this probably would have been a much different game. I have played quite a few games today in this, just seeing how it fares across a number of matches um, the number of carrier games you get thrown into you just get absolutely shafted radar cruisers in the game if you're not paying attention you're gonna get shafted all these um, high tier HE spam and cruisers with rapid reloads you're gonna be shafted so basically although this was an absolutely amazing boat when it was first released and People hated seeing it in game, but the guys that had it and knew how to play tall boats, they absolutely loved it. And this was literally my first game of the morning with some coffee, just to try and capture some um, video to throw a video together. And uh, I was going to do some clips, and I just thought, no, the whole game can go in, because it turned into a cracking one. Kraken, Kraken, yes, it was a Kraken, Kraken game. Now, I often say that there's no point in sitting and contesting a cap if you're not spotting anything. And uh, yeah, I'm doing exactly that. Uh, so I'm going against my own rules here. But I know there is a radar destroyer out there. Now, the tweak that Wargaming have made where the ship running the radar can see you, but nobody else can see you for five seconds, does give you a little bit of extra survivability. Um, but against the black he's got big guns rapid firing um he can probably fire three salvos for my one but that doesn't mean to say that we aren't going to shoot at him because we've got a wichita behind us i know he's running a sonar um, i'm not quite sure if he's running his radar yet um but mr black is out there we aren't a gunboat but we are going to steer guns on this guy because all the damage, all the hit points we can take off him. We get a fire on there. I think he's already damage controlled. We're going to try and pop some shots across the top of the island. And literally minutes into the game, we've got our first kill. We're on the cap. Now, I'm always trying to keep an eye on the minimap to see what's going on. And I can see that there is a Zetan coming around that corner there. He's come the long way around. I don't want to be anywhere near him. And so I'm going to play a little bit selfish while taking a trip to the beach. And I'm going to get out of this capture point because the other destroyer came across from the center of the map. And that means both our destroyers are in this cap. Lose us both and we could potentially screw the team. So I'm going to get out of here. I'm looking at the map. The center seems open. I'm going to head north. And I'm going to head for their start cap at the top of the map. The Yudachi is an absolute beast in open water. Where you've got the ability to move, spot and get those torpedoes off. Um, I've got, I think it's a little over a minute reload. On these torpedoes you've got two sets of four they're very hard hitting the black and the paulo emilio i think are the only two destroyers at tier seven that do more damage with their torpedoes 
and the Kagero and the Adachi both have a torpedo reload. It takes eight seconds to load a second set of torpedoes. However, on the Kagero, you do have to sacrifice your smoke screens for that torpedo reload. There's the Helena. I'm staying away from him. I'm pushing through. I'm trying to keep as much spotted as I can. We are three ships down. Red team are two ships down. And I've got an Iowa heading this way. He is a big fat juicy target. He's got some nasty guns. We are going to see what we can do to send him back to port. Now I don't imagine he's going to sail in a straight line for very long i'm quite certain that he knows that i'm out here somewhere he does start his turn this eight seconds is just enough time for somebody to hit their damage con and then to pop some more torps into them so this is nice a um, lot of players don't often see the adachi out here they don't know what it's capable of they think that's the torps i've survived but little does he know that there's more on the way somebody is going to try and snipe that kill look lots of shells land near him but that's my kill buddy kill number two and uh, what are we three minutes into the game no sorry four and a half nearly five minutes into the game there we go so we've got the plymouth spotted i don't want to be anywhere near him either um like i said no radar cruisers in this game that is the reason why I'll, while i am able to get out here in open water without fear of being lit up on radar but we're on the cap what we've done here is we've split red team they know there's a ship out here that eye has just disappeared they know it's a yadachi and i'm behind them the guys that are across there on um, the far cap that have taken it red team um, they know there's a Yudachi push through so they are going to want to try and stay as far away from me as possible now here we go tops are up again and what we're going to do is just overlay them left and right of the center line on that torpedo indicator now that um, cruiser he could move left right he could probably very easily avoid those he certainly doesn't want to be broadside to all those battleships that are out there um but we're going to tease him a little bit we're going to tease him a little bit and uh, let him know where we are i wouldn't normally do that but i just thought i want to distract him a bit there's a fire he's let that burn there's one two torpedo hits kill number three right we've got a couple of battleships a destroyer and i think a cruiser left we know where they are we've got three caps we've got control of the game but we are down on point still there's the jervis as you can see i've got 4.8 concealment to his what 5.3 so i've got half a k to play with here when i'm hunting him down he doesn't want to stay spotted so he pops the smoke and he pulls back i'm almost ready for another torpedo salvo and so um while I don't expect him to be a dope and a smoke, what I'm going to do is put the torpedoes out there because with this fast reload, I can afford to do this. I'm going to put the torpedoes out there and try and limit his movement and perhaps get lucky with him trying to get away by dropping one straight in his butt. Um, but he's going to get away. Tier 6 versus Tier 7. Um could i try guns on them yes but at the moment nobody else from red team is spotted so that's going to be my next job and there we go sean horse there at the bottom i've got uh, two battleships across there to my right and i'm thinking okay you guys can deal with the sean horse now do do i push down through the center um no look there's the zetan so i'm thinking zetan torpedoes sonar lots of secondaries don't want to get spotted by the destroyer because that zetan's secondaries will tear me to shreds now if you look down at my hit points at the moment you'll see that i am still on absolutely full health we have not lost a single hit point purely by staying stealthy that zetan wants to come through the gap out there if i was him 
I'd have saved a sonar for pushing out into open water through a small gap because that is a choke point and uh, knowing full well there's a destroyer out here you can guarantee if I can see you there's torpedoes coming your way and that's exactly what I'm going to do now my twist and track indicator is telling me that the other battleship is closer than the Zeton and uh, that is kill number four and we break a hundred thousand damage we still haven't lost a single hit point because we are aiming for perfection there is the colorado we're very close to our detection range here and actually if you look here we go to 4.7 then 4.8 but we don't actually get detected to 4.7 the first time we don't get detected there so i'm wondering what's going on here is, is something you know playing funny here is something a little bit hinky but here we go we've got torpedoes coming up again in a few seconds this guy is sailing out broadside i'm thinking surely you're going to turn you're not going to keep sailing in a straight line and uh, what we'll do we'll just bang those torps out there i think i think i'm running 80 knot torpedoes here they are quite rapid and as i said they pack a huge punch i think it's just over 20,000 damage but somebody's taken a huge chunk off him which is going to drop my damage score 4.7 we get picked up and bang 11,880 hit points that was a perfect kraken until those secondaries hit me so if i'd have been a bit more um or had my wits about me a bit more i probably would have wouldn't have taken those secondary hits and uh we could have perhaps ended the match with full health but given that the fifth kill went down before his secondaries hit me um i'll take as that as a perfect kraken and that'll be the third um after getting one in a battleship and one in the kamikaze but there we go kraken number 124 130,172 damage the shanhorst is way down there there is a destroyer out here somewhere i'm sure he's very low health and i'm debating here whether or not to go for the capture point um i don't know i'm thinking yeah we could play this for a massive xp game um and in hindsight i should have um because although it was a damn good game it could have been so much better um and i probably rubbed myself a little bit but as you can see in open water with a full stealth build and rapid loading torpedoes without the risk of any radar cruisers the Adachi can be an absolute nightmare to battleships and potentially cruisers as well terror traverse is a bit dodgy on this one it goes very slow but that's because of how we have it specced there is the destroyer check it out um yeah we're just gonna run we're not gonna die on this one even if it gets torpedoes off we don't kill them with those but we come up for the reload there we go we lose a couple more hit points but he's gone that's a six pack and the shan horse is going to disappear very quickly too so there we go a solid win for blue team kraken unleashed 124 six pack for me with 131,000 damage and moving on to the team sheet we finish on 3249 base xp which is pretty much a thousand higher than second place so i'll give myself a pat on the back for that one it wasn't a carry everybody played reasonably well there um, bar a couple of ships but you can see there 629,000 credits in the bank from one game um, it is a coiner if you can get it right so i hope you have enjoyed this little rundown of the yadachi and the captains and a little bit of gameplay um if you have please drop me a note in the comments let me know what you think are you going to drop some global xp on that um don't forget like subscribe tell your friends and stick around click a link and watch one of these videos until next time it's been great take care and goodbye